Oh my God, you're here. You made it. You guys, you followed a link you found on social media and now you're here listening to me. Am I a comedian you hate? Am I some Jewish girl you find hot on Instagram? I'm not sure, but I am so excited for you to listen to this first episode of The Ali Colbert Show and to join us on our podcasting journey because it's never too late to start a podcast. We are rolling. Okay. Hello, welcome to the Ali Colbert Show. I am in Connecticut now. I'm joined by my sister, as always, Jackie Colbert. Hey, guys. <laughs> Can you just like chill out a little? <laughs> Sorry. It, it doesn't have to be so formal. Okay. And, and uh, also my girlfriend, Julian. What's up? Sup? <laughs> <laughs> we just got back from Baltimore. <laughs> And we're here in Connecticut before we return to the city and I pack up my things and bid adieu to New York for 10 days. Now I'm moving there to Los Angeles, but I'm going to still go back and forth or maybe I'm just telling myself that because I'm scared. I know I will go back and forth. I'll go back and forth. But when I, when I, I used to say to my mom, when she tucked me in at night, go back and forth, like go back from her room to mine all night long. (laughs) And now I'm doing that as an adult about my move to Los Angeles. Anyway, we were just in... You would tell her to go back and forth. Yeah, she would tuck me in and I'd be like, but go back and forth. Promise you'll go back and forth. Did she ever do it? Yeah, she would go back and forth for the first like 10 minutes until I drifted off. She would like go into her room and then she would like come back and and then after a few minutes if she didn't return, I'd like scream down the hall like, you're not going back and forth. (laughs) And she'd be like, I want to go to sleep. Like I'm not like a drug mule. (laughs) Anyway, we were in Baltimore because Julian's from there. Not for like, you know, a tourist destination. And I had never been to Baltimore that I remember. I think I had been there one time passing through Baltimore for a school trip that I maybe stopped at an aquarium in Baltimore. And I think that was on Americana. My school had a trip in eighth grade. They would take the eighth graders and they would put them on a bus and they would go to D.C. And then on the way there, they would they would stop. In Baltimore. That's like a long trip for you guys. Yeah, it yeah, was, it was a, long. Yeah, it was a really long trip. And it was a nightmare. I hated those trips. I hate because I hated school to begin with. So the fact that we were adding an overnight element. Oh my God, it was overnight? It was for yeah, like a weekend. Of course, you didn't drive all the way to, you went the whole right. week. Oh yeah, you we went, never had an overnight trip. Where did it was horrible. Sleep? We slept at like a hilt, like a some like sort of Hilton or something. It was absolutely horrible. I had the worst experience. I hate school to begin with. So now that you're packing us all into a coach bus, you're sending us to DC. We, I just, there's too, too many social things at play to enjoy. I'm not enjoying a week away with like 200 plus pubescent 12 year olds. (laughs) Like that's stressful. It's enough for me to figure out where I'm going to sit in the cafeteria. I don't, I don't, I can't figure out like where I'm like, and you're, you have, a roommate. You actually have three roommates, I think. You have four people per room. You're sharing a bed with a classmate. Like, I don't want to share a bed. Like, I have my own shit when I get home. I got my own backpack. <laughs> my own backpack. Like, <laughs> I'm not like, it's not easy for me to go to school to begin with. You have to wake up, get there at the ass crack of dawn. It's way too early to start. I, I, Do you think so, Jackie? Because you're kind of a morning person. Were you okay with that? It, was, it wasn't hard for me, but yeah, I don't know. Oh my uh, school god, school was better for me probably than for Allie, but I definitely hated Americana for sure. <laughs> oh my god, you're waking up so early. It's frigid. It's pitch black when you get up. Then you walk out to wait for a bus, like you're some <laughs> convict. You're waiting for the bus. You get on the bus. It's just it's miserable, and you're so tired. You're in homeroom by seven fifteen. It was just it was just really it was really difficult for me, and I remember taking that coach bus ride it doesn't matter that I was 12 I already had IBS I couldn't what am I, <laughs> and by the way the whole issue with these trips is like you can't have any like agency on the trip whatsoever so I and like if, if you go to a bathroom you have to like get a buddy so I'm constantly <laughs> having to tell my buddy I'm like listen I'm sorry but like I, <laughs> like, I, have, like <laughs> I have like an inflamed colon I don't know what to tell you like I think I have like I think I'm like, I have ulcerative colitis. Like it's not fully diagnosed yet. Like I know I'm 12. The other amazing thing they do is they remove your cell phone. 
So I can't call anyone. I can't even send like. Wait, what grade are you in for this? Um, yeah. So we went on this Americana field trip where we all went to DC. Like my grade was like 200 plus people. And so they split us up into coach buses, which was horrible. And you all have to like wear a neon green t-shirt because no. yeah, you have to wear. A, oh my God. You, you have to wear like team shirts. Yeah. Cause they don't want you to like get kidnapped because <laughs> the only people on the trip are like the teachers who at that time are each like 23 trying to like debating whether or not they should like blow the jock behind the Washington <laughs> monument. So we're on the bus. It's already going to school. It's already a nightmare for me. So the idea of adding a sort of evening element to this <laughs> is like very overwhelming it's for like, my little nervous system. Didn't have enough. Yeah. I like, I'm like, I can barely hang out with you guys when the sun's up. Like I have no idea what will happen when it's down. I can't do that. Like I have anxiety at night. Like I go yeah. home and I cry and like I still <laughs> sometimes sleep in bed with my mom. I can't sleep in bed with three kids from my science class. Like I'm not good with that. So that's going on. And then the other the other added benefit of the trip is that they take away your devices. They take away your phone. You can't call home. That's insane. You can't have anything that like might incite jealousy from the other kids. So like I like to like listen to audiobooks at night to go to sleep. You like, you couldn't do that. Of course not. Wait, it's so it doesn't incite jealousy? No, I don't know what it is, but like you can't have like things like that on the trip. Cuz they thought I'm that sorry, would make it better Julian, and easier. You need to stop taking my water. Everywhere we go, you take my water. I'm tired. Your water's right there. It's empty. Okay, well, that's not my problem. <laughs> and I'm sorry. I have this thing where I, every day I take a glass of water <laughs> And I fill it up and you get your weaselly hands on it and you take it and you slurp it down. And then when you're out of water, you say, Allie, will you go get some? That's not true. You know for a fact. No, because you won't get up. You say, I'm too lazy to get up. So you sit there and you won't get up. And it's like, you can't do that. All right. I apologize. No, I know. it's just No, you don't have I'll to. I'll just sit here thirsty while you enjoy it. Tall glass of Julian, ice you cold can have water. Some of my no, water no, bottle. you can. No, the issue isn't that she has has some of, of my water. She can always have some of my water. The issue is that she takes my water and then doesn't give it back. You then keep it in your corner. You have okay. no. Okay, I take your water. Sammy does that too. It's annoying. Yeah, it's really annoying. Anyway, we go on Americana. I get in a huge fight with my my friend at the time, who's my roommate. You, by the way, picking roommates is like mutual selection for a sorority. It's like this like blind pick. You have to like guess which click you're in. And they're like, someone, like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's horrible. You're like, I'm pretty sure I'm friends with Callie. And then they like open up an envelope. It's like, you're rooming with Amanda. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> anyway, go into, I'm in the room. I'm sharing a bed with my best friend at a time. I don't know what fight we get in, but we get in a fight and she's in the bathroom. She's from, she was from Iran. She's in the bathroom. She's running the shower. And while she's running the shower, she's like, I know she's bitching about me in Farsi to her mother. And I'm like, in the, she had like smuggled in a cell phone. She was like friends with some of the popular kids. So they would like pass them behind their back. I'm in the room, the other bed. I'm like very sad. I'm like, I'm probably writing a letter to my Jewish mother. It's like the Middle Eastern conflict. <laughs> In the whole, the fucking hill, the Hilton outside of the DC. So this is what's going on. I remember I like wrote a letter to my mom. I was so dramatic. It was, it was a five, four night trip. I was writing a letter to my mom. The letter will be, I can hand deliver it when I get back. And I would do, I would, I was so dramatic that if I like cried on the paper, I would like circle the damp tear and like write an arrow to it. I'd be like, this is my tear crying. <laughs> Julian's mad. I did that. I know you did that too. You were really dramatic. We yeah. had similarly dramatic camp experiences. Yeah. We were very homesick. Oh you were not homesick at all, Jack. No, I was fine. Why? She's one of those kids. You yeah, didn't like mom know. that much. She's no, a well adjusted mom. But you know so what's funny? Much. You know what's so funny? You just, you don't have the separation anxiety. And still till this day, because we were just upstairs with my mom and we said, we're going to go down to record. And my mom said, okay, I'm going to sleep. And I stopped in my tracks. I turned around and I hugged her goodbye. And Jackie followed her and hugged her. And my mom said, Jackie, you would never hug me goodbye. Why are you doing that right now? Yeah. And you did it because of me. You have no, you I don't love like mom. mom. I just, no, it's not that. <laughs> I love mom so much. I just never had, I have a lot of anxiety in a lot of different places. Never had it about like separation from, uh -huh. they're right. always going to be there. I'll see them when I see them. It's right. all good. Right, right, right. So, you know, the trip, we go back to the trip. All of our meals are planned for us. That's another, that's another obstacle for us. 
you know, sorry, Jackie's actually telling me she needs some of my water. I'm just sorry. Saying, I, just, I, just, I want everyone, I I want everyone to know bottle. what I go through. I want everyone to see what I go through. Now you're the only one here with water. No, I know the no, irony. I, what? Look, you have to understand, we've gone through all of our resources. I yes. don't want to get up. I want to keep talking. I want to hang out. This is our, we need to so share, share our last resource. Yeah. Okay. Just l- leave it. Okay, we'll ration until we're ready for a break. You How are you to telling share. me to leave it? You leave it. <laughs> it's it's my water. water. She just took my water and looked <laughs> at me and said, leave it. You leave it. It's my water. It's it's the community's water now. So we go on this trip. I was telling you guys before, it's a buddy system because <laughs> they don't want to lose you. And no one cares about you on that trip. So you're, ba- you're basically given a number. And then I had like a teacher like Miss McConnell. She just like calls out one through 50 and hopes she hears a yes. And then you're on the bus. So I'm like, yes for someone else. I know. There's no... 50 here. So not, 51. Not fucking enough. here. It's the same person. She would just keep going. Right. Yeah. We're all in the stupid dumb t-shirt. The boys are just making jokes about, you know, how the fucking... What's the monument that looks like a dick? That joke. <laughs> That's it. The There's nothing... Yeah, I guess. There's nothing going on. That's the whole trip. <laughs> That's the whole trip. And every time you go to the bathroom, you have to take a partner. And I just keep having to tap Kelly. And I'm like, listen, I'm sorry, but I'm like running loose here. Mm-hmm. I got to go to the bathroom. I'm like, that's embarrassing. You're I- like actually like, seeing cool stuff. It's just unfortunate that I, at least I'm too distracted by the social situation to even take in one second of any information. Totally. Of, of course you can't take in any information. And you're like, oh, my crush is on bus six. Bus six <laughs> loads in five minutes. You're bus like- six is going to the barbecue place. Bus four is going to the Italian place. We're fucked. Is there any way we can switch? Say we got on it by accident. Can you AIM him? I'm like, there's nothing we can do. Let him go. Let Cole go. A-I-M. It's like a whole fucking nightmare. You're like sweating. You're waking yeah. up in the middle of the night. You're like, how far is my room from his? You got your hands on the wall. Right. You go down the hall at night. They're like, the boys went to the lobby. I'm like, I can't handle this. I can't handle this. No one's going far. No one has a driver's license. No one's leaving anything. We're like, we think he's in the gym. It was so stressful. I remember getting off that bus from Americana and running into my mother's arms and running into her arms and I was like, I can't believe I have to go back to school on Monday because this has felt, this has taken years off of my life. <laughs> I felt, I literally came home. We went to DC. I, I felt jet lagged. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. I was like seven hours behind. I like need a few days to catch up. I can't just go back to history. I'm still recovering from being on vacation with all seven members of the lacrosse team. <laughs> like that was fucking taboo. You know what I mean? Like, that's not like a, like I'm only going family vacations. I'm not used to like going out to a restaurant <laughs> with like people in different clicks. Like my, so intense. My mind it's, cannot it handle so that. Intense. So it's such an it's intense like experience. Seeing people in different elements. And they're like, let's just mix this with a little bit of history. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm like, this does not go together. I know. No. Seriously. Like I can't be in the theater that Lincoln got shot <laughs> while like the girl I got my period next to is there. Like it's just, it's so overwhelming. And it's it's at that point in time, everyone you go to school with, school is your li- your life. You don't have life. And then school is like a tiny part of it. And those are the people, you know, now when you think about your life, you know, you know, tons of people from t- tons of different places at that point of time. Everyone who goes to school, imagine everyone in your life was on one trip. <laughs> That's what school is like. You don't have a community outside of school. You're not like, well, those are my school friends and those are my friends from work. You know what I mean? <laughs> All you have is people in your science yeah. class. That's your whole fucking community other than your family. Mm-hmm. And it's so overwhelming. It was so overwhelming. And that wasn't the first trip that we went on as a school because my school was particularly evil and they brought the sixth graders on a trip and that trip was called nature's classroom and that trip um people have read about it in the news it was a program that operated in upstate new york and during the program they would do a simulation of the underground railroad and it has since of course been canceled quote unquote it's, it actually has literally been canceled, but it was also, it has gone through What the, was that like? So, but I'll tell you what it was. All of the kids, that was like the big event on the trip. Did you have this, Jackie? It was canceled by the time? They canceled it. I think you were the last year. So they bring all the kids on the trip and the last day of the trip or the last night, they wake you up or you stay up late and they have you hold each other's hands while your heads are facing down and you're like marching throughout a field as if you're chained with another sta- with other slaves being brought to the north. And you eventually are like brought to a field after like three hours 
of our counselors yelling at us to look at the dirt. And wow. then you're told to like run across a kickball field, some like cornfield that's like also has a sports field on it. And they say like, you're, you're free. You're in the North. That obviously was very traumatizing for some people. And my school, mind you, was like a predominantly like white school. So you, it's a totally I can't believe insensitive simulation. Um, mm. Yeah, I can't believe that exists. But um, I was also really nervous to go on that trip. And on that trip, I actually had like a meltdown on my first night of the trip. <laughs> And I had requested to, to I'm change I'm only rooms. laughing because like I know Allie at this point in her life. And I just like feel so bad because it wasn't so hard for you to go on those trips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because of what, how I was. No, yeah, like mine were bad. And it was like my biggest fight of eighth grade and stuff. But like the added layer of like, I slept in Allie's room with her until she was like 14. Because she couldn't like, like she needs us. <laughs> and like as a 12 year old Allie. Okay, hang me out to dry. But yeah, that's true. I have. Wait, what is, tell me more. Okay, I'm very so intrigued. I think I just, <laughs> I had a lot of issues growing up. I was a very anxious, depressed kid. God, I just so can't even picture it. And it was all, it was, I can't even it was it. all yeah, she's directly like blossom, amazing, yeah. related That's to my sexuality. To- yeah. It was, it was, everything was anxious and depression from being a closeted kid. Wow. And I, yeah, it was, it manifested itself in me being a gigantic loser. But I go to nature's classroom and I have an absolute meltdown and I request to change rooms. <laughs> like I'm like moving into a college. <laughs> I'm there for like three nights in Lake George. <laughs> what I do is I request to room with a family friend because I think she'll be more supportive of my. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I so get that. I so get that. So I'm like, I'm rooming with this like girl who's my friend. Nice. She's my friend. But I insist. It's a safer choice. Insist I'm with fam- a family friend so I can really let loose with my emotions <laughs> and I don't have to pretend I'm okay when every night I cry before I go to sleep. Right. No, I get that. Because that was like the, a safer space. The first night with the other girl, I cried into my pillow and it was very <laughs> difficult. <laughs> So I needed, I needed to room with someone who I can just <laughs> let be openly miserable with. But, she, but I so think that's it, what happened. Yeah, and I brought printout photos. <laughs> I brought printout photos of my family on the trip. I bought, I like went on to like Picasso, our photo app at the time, and printed on the word paper like colored photos of my parents and their their friends. No. <laughs> yeah. And like, like looked at them before I went to sleep, like showed them off. No. Yep. And at this time, <laughs> you're like going to see my. You guys want to see my folks? Oh, I'm like <laughs> I'm like full on someone's like husband to war, showing photos, like sketched photos of their wife and children. It's like my mom and dad. I'm like these are the faces she's a of family my family friends, so she like knows them. She's like I she's don't like oh I that. miss them too because she was similarly downtrodden about the trip and of course on that trip you're also not allowed a phone so I start slowly planting the seeds to see if I can get a phone call (laughs) can I have my phone call (laughs) because I think if only I'm given a call I can talk my way out of this and I will send up a flare and dad will get in his minivan and trek 12 hours to upstate New York to save me from this hell. Because if only I have service, they'll hear me out. They're my one call. They're my one. Everyone deserves one call. Totally. So I'm going for, my angle is to get my history teacher, Miss George, who I loved and I still love. And she, she was such a wonderful teacher because she so like got, understood children. And oh God, she was like my ally in this. I always, I always was like, she was my ally, but I was going to get her to help me go to Miss Mijos, vice, vice principal at the time, <laughs> who was such an evil, evil bitch. <laughs> and I Never thought at the time happened. she was like 70. She was probably like 40. <laughs> and I was like, she's old, you know? And I was, <laughs> I started asking her for a phone call. And I remember I was hysterical while I was asking her. And she, I remember she said to me, stop crying. Stop crying. And I was like, that, that that's never worked for me. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> like no one has ever been like, Ali, stop crying. And I was like, cool. Yeah, I'm chill. Like, I didn't want to be 
sobbing over my mom <laughs> at nature's classroom. You know, I didn't want that to be my experience. So uh, after like three days, I wear her down. She is like so beaten down that she finally says that I can have a phone call. She takes me into some like office. Like this is clearly an office building where they're like renting out the basement to like a <laughs> hundred sixth graders to like reenact like the civil war. I finally get a phone call from my mom and I remember I was approaching the phone and there was a glass door and there was one phone on the other side. They give you privacy like you're like a prisoner. You know what I mean? Like you're, I'm like, don't watch me on my phone call. Fuck her. <laughs> like, like, like you warden bitch. Like I'm going to call my mom and like I'll talk to my lawyers. Like don't fucking look at me. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I was like, I'm going to press charges on all of you. So I go into the other room and there's someone on the phone at that point in time. And I was waiting online. I was like, wow, someone else had like been like hysterical and gotten their phone call. And it was the school bully. Oh, which is just looking back is like the most obvious thing. Like, <laughs> you're a bully and you really like or have such issues and like need your mom. And I remember yeah. him and I made eye contact when we left. When he, he walked out of the room and I walked in and I remember he was like, oh, fuck. I was caught. And I was like, yeah, me fucking too. And we just kind of locked eyes like we're just these two little bitches in like seventh grade who like can't hang. And I went in the room and I called mom. And mom was like, hello. And I was like, mom. And she's like, it's me. It's Allie. You fucking remember me. She's like, Allie. She's like, Allie, how's it going? I'm like, clearly not well. I'm pretty sure they like had to call her ahead of time and they were like, hey, we just want to clear with you like that your daughter's been asking for like several phone calls a day. And mom had to like green light me like transferring into like my friend's room. And I was like, mom, I'm having trouble making it through. She was like, it's two more nights. And I was like, what'd you guys eat for dinner tonight? <laughs> so he, she's like, uh, Kraft mac and cheese. And I'm like, just like home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I couldn't, they just did things that I was like not comfortable with. Like I remember one night at nature's classroom for dinner, they did that thing where they like crush up Oreos and put worms in it. Uh, and they're like, oh, it's like worms from a thing. And I was like, I was just, I was so <laughs> miserable. I couldn't believe it. I, I actually remember they were like, I was like, I don't really like this food. Is there anything else I can eat? And they were like, we have oatmeal. And I was like, great. I love oatmeal. And they gave me a dry packet. And I was like, I didn't, I don't know how to make it. I'm sorry. I'm like nine. I don't know how to make this oatmeal. But they like didn't teach me. So I just like, was like by the yogurts. I was like, I guess you put like ice in it. I don't know. I put like ice. I like, I put anything I could. I put water and it was just like watery oatmeal. And I was like, fuck. I just like started stirring it quickly and I was like, I think this will do it. And then like nothing happened. And then I think I just ate like oatmeal in like water, like cereal and milk. And I was, I was just like, I was so upset. I was so, so upset. And I remember on that trip, on the way up, we stopped at a rest station. <laughs> this is, and everyone was allowed out. So like it was like the ones we we go to in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. What are they called? The rest stops. They all look the same. They all look the They're same. So classic. They have a Nathan's hot dog, a Cinnabon, a Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Randomly, like there's a usually a gift shop. <laughs> there's and, and a Popeyes, there's and then there's Popeyes. two bathrooms, and then there's like twenty Hasidic Jews, and then there's like and, the Dip and Dots thing. Yeah, but outside. every once in a while, one of those has like a really good fast food restaurant in it, and. Then What's you have to like memorize like, oh my God, yeah, like the one off exit 36 is a Shake Shack. <laughs> oh, oh, really? really? Or like a Chipotle or something. Oh. Yeah, there's no, this when like I one was, exit. Toward, that wasn't the case when I was. Those should be like way more built up. Like those should be like the better rest destinations. Stops? The rest no, stops? Wouldn't that like make <clears throat> driving so much I feel like they've so tried to fun. do that and it just doesn't, it's not Wait, like what? It. What do you mean by like, what's a better one? Like just like, Put a little flair into it. Like No, they had ones all along Connecticut and they put a pink berry in them. Oh, really? Think, cool. Thinking like, oh my gosh, it's going to be sick. There's yeah. going to be a pink berry and a Dunkin' and whatever. But like at the end of the day, if you're on the merit, like most of the time, you're like driving to get somewhere. So the, obviously, all, they took all right. of them. They took all of them off. But yeah, I think but there she's could saying, be longer, like no, all it doesn't the way work, along like 95 work. or something. But are you you saying it Maybe incentivizes them to go keep to going, like rewards you? It's like you gotta get to this next rest. No, but stop. sometimes they do. They'll they'll be like Cracker Barrel in two miles, Cracker Barrel in one mile. <laughs> no, but that's yeah. different. And you like Who my family. Go to no, Cracker Barrel. Uh, my fucking Wait, we family. We went all the time. Are you kidding? What are you doing there? Play. You play. have the time of your life. You fucking Some of my best play memories with, have happened in a Cracker Barrel. You play with a <laughs> rifle and then have a biscuit and then sit on a rocking chair. I can't. Like, anyone who's been to Cracker Barrel knows that golden wow. trifecta. You sit on a rocking chair. You, the, you eat an old fashioned. 
candy and then you have chicken and like waffles. Like that's the experience, right? The fake um, mm. gum that looks like gold and there you like pretend you're like a pioneer like in the gold rush. Oh my God. Those were just our games. It was very fun though. It yeah. was very fun. Mm. But what I was going to say was this. It's like it's for food or it's for <laughs> Cracker Barrel is a restaurant. It's like and a restaurant while you're chain. waiting for your table at the restaurant, there is kind of like a faux antique shop that sells trinkets and toys and okay, okay. and like so, old fashioned candy. And it's really fun for like a little kid and for my dad. And is it places that are not, is it a rest stop or is it like off the highway too? Like no, it's not a more? rest stop. It's like an, its own chain of restaurants that are strategically sprinkled throughout different like Outback like, Steakhouse routes. or something? Yes, like an Outback Steakhouse, no, but, but better, but with no, more but charm. always off of the highway. That's what I was just asking. That's yeah, but a- Outback Steakhouses sometimes are in strip malls. Right, there are some <laughs> places like, but I don't know if that's true. Like I think there are some Cracker Barrels that are like, I don't oh, yeah. know. Maybe just, I don't like, know the, the truth barrels, about all these crackers. Also, barrels. what happened to Fuddruckers? Do you uh, guys know that place? No, or? I've never heard of it. No, I've heard of it, but I've never been or seen it. Yeah. What is it? It's like a hamburger, fast food, but like restaurant. <laughs> it, it was like Shake Shack, but like the worst version of that that could exist. Back in oh. the day. Yeah. <laughs> but it was b- above, Back in the day. above McDonald's. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, to sit down. Right. I mean, I really loved. Cracker Barrel, I loved that they would put biscuits and little corn muffins on the table. And the other mm. thing I would enjoy is the triangle game that they would put on the table that was wood and had like, you know, like 12 or 10 holes in it. And you would have to hop pegs. And I, it was like a fun the brain teaser. Pegs. Yeah, it was it was honestly like one of my my, my favorite memories. The chicken fingers. I have an, I have amazing memories from that place. The drawing one with like the magnetic hair and you could like do his hairstyle. Yeah, just like those I types of toys game. and stuff that felt very, that was like very of the time that like yeah, 90s God. gadgets and things. That's so nostalgic, Cracker Barrel. Wow. Anyway, on the way to Nature's Classroom, we stopped at this rest stop with like everyone in our grade. And it was really <laughs> interesting so to Nature's see what like <laughs> what kids got. Like you were like, oh, like Kendall's going to Starbucks or like… Oh, oh, wow. Oh, I think all, the, yeah, all the boys are doing KFC. Yeah, they're yeah. all. <laughs> and it was like, oh, okay, they're doing that. And then if you like wanted to. You would like, like spot the teachers around too. Oh, you're yeah, like, yeah. whoa. Oh, yeah. You're like, what? They're like going there. <laughs> they they eat. Like, eat. <laughs> yeah. But, and then like, if you were to want, if you wanted something that like not everyone was out, like you really had to like veer out on your own and like bravely make that choice. I'm sorry. I just want to point out that Julian took the water and didn't return it. <laughs> it's sorry. just ridiculous. I did. So yeah, you got to keep returning it, Jules. Yeah. So, so I'm in training now. <laughs> so yeah, that was really fun going to those rest stops. I don't know what I'm saying. That was really fun. But what I was going to say was we get to that rest stop and there's like a Starbucks and there's a Nathan's. And we all, I think we all went to Starbucks and everyone was like, told me they were like, you have to get the strawberry frappuccino. (laughs) (laughs) They were like, like everyone like lost their mind that I had it. it." (laughs) They were like, (laughs) they're like, listen, (laughs) there's nothing more incredible in this world than than the strawberry frappuccino. And it was one of those things where like, I saw girls with that pink drink. And I was like, I knew in my mind, like, I was always going to get it, but it felt so far away. Like, I was like, that's like such a dream. Like, I hope to be able to get that one day if I can just like line up me having money at the same time as like passing a Starbucks. (laughs) You know, because like those two things were totally out of my control. I didn't have money. I didn't drive. So if that that synced up in such a way that my mom had lent me money, I would love to get myself a pink. pink (laughs) Your mom didn't give you money for this trip? No, no, she did. I had money on this trip, but this was my time where I really got to act on it. I'm saying I saw that pink oh. pink drink before. Girls would come to school. They might I might see them throwing out. They might coming into school, and I never I never got one. I never was about was around Starbucks. So on this trip, when everyone was saying, "Oh, you got to get it," I was like, "I can't wait!" Like I'm I'll I'll totally. And the line was long because almost every girl in school lined up at the Starbucks rest stop. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? So. So they were like, they were, they were like, like, if you five hundred person line. So they were like, you really need to like wait for it. So I spent the whole t- we had like an hour. I spent the whole hour waiting, <laughs> and I finally got it. And everyone was like, isn't it amazing? And I was like, oh, it's so good. And then, because all my friends we were stuck on the same line, they said on the way back we should split up and we should each go to a different one and try all the food. We thought it was like amazing food. <laughs> and I was like, totally. 
I think it was me, Alexa, and like Caroline Harris. And I was like, yeah, we'll do fries. We'll do a chocolate chip cookie <laughs> and we'll do a strawberry frappuccino. And they were like, that's a great idea. Yeah, let's try and do something like that. <laughs> and then it's a week later, we're at the rest stop. And at that point- A week later, nature's classroom is a day and a half trip. But that's no, no, a week for us. It was Wednesday to Friday. It was a four night sleepover. Okay, keep going. Maybe it was Tuesday to Friday, but okay. it was not. It wasn't one night. So mm-hmm. a week later, no, because I remember looking out over the lake with Alexa and saying, in just four days, we'll be home. <laughs> 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 like literally looking out and I was like, isn't it? I remember I was like, I was constantly talking to people about how quick the trip was yeah. <laughs> in a way to diffuse my anxiety. So I would just go up to everyone and be like, day two, can you believe it? <laughs> and, they'd be, <laughs> and they'd be like, will you fucking stop? And I'd be like, wow, we only have three more nights, right? <laughs> just like, Really like transparently trying to like calm myself down through like conversations with people. And if someone was like, it just like, I would just like wait for someone to say something that would like set me off and I'd like fall <laughs> into some like fear coma. But we go back to the rest stop on the way back. And at that point, I wasn't on the same bus with my original rest stop group. And I just like, I don't know what I did. I just got online and got something. And then afterwards, I like was like found my friends at a table. And, and Alexa was like, I got fries and <laughs> she was like, I got fries and a cookie and another thing and I was like I was like what and she was like I did what you said <laughs> I split I, I tried to get everything <laughs> and I was like oh I'm sorry I forgot and she was like you didn't get the thing you said she said you didn't get the thing you said you'd get <laughs> And I was like, I'm sorry. I like, <laughs> it's been a long week. <laughs> I can't remember our rest stop arrangement. And her and I got an issue. Like, <laughs> I'm in a female pants. She like, didn't talk to me on the way home. And the issue with getting in fights there was because my mom was best friends with her mom. So if I went home and told my mom, we would have to like have these clearing combos <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> so like three days passed by. I had to call Alexa. After the weekend, I was like, hey, listen, I'm sorry about <laughs> not getting the Frappuccino, but I had a lot on my mind. It was a long ride. I wasn't really in the mood for anything else. I know I said I wanted wanted the fries and everything, but I forgot. <laughs> I, I, she said it okay, but I heard it in her voice. She wasn't over it. Oh my God. But I remember on that trip, <laughs> they had necklaces, oh, and they would—they were like beaded necklaces. <laughs> Are you laughing that I'm still talking about this? Because it's like she's so clearly still not over it. <laughs> I remember every minute. <laughs> but on that trip, they had beaded necklaces, and they would give you the necklace if you like, like were like having a hard day. And I remember what? like one girl came up to me and she gave me her necklace and she looked at me and we weren't even that close, that girl and I. She gave me, and foreshadowing, she would go on to be my Americana roommate who we had a fight with. But she gave me my, my necklace and she was like, You've, you're so strong. Because like everyone on campus <laughs> then like on that like program knew me as the girl who was like calling home. <laughs> <laughs> so like... You know, to have someone who like wasn't in your friend group kind of acknowledge your struggle, like it got around town. <laughs> wow, I know. And you know what? I'm just realizing. Yeah, I'm. I have an issue with these. I have such a trauma from these like overnight camp <laughs> trips that when I then studied abroad in college, <laughs> and the the program I was studying abroad at did a few weekend weekend trips, I said I wasn't going. I said I'm not going. And everyone said, Why wouldn't you go on the trip? It's mm-hmm. so fun. They go to like wherever and, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, I'd rather do my own thing. And I, I'm realizing now I associated any like school program where you go away with the trauma that I had on those trips. And I say trauma. I don't <laughs> I don't like saying trauma because it like associates like there's like some victimhood here. I understand it was. No, my own. it is on a level traumatic. I mean, I understand like the, the issues I had on that trip, mm-hmm. which, yeah, I mean, obviously going on a school trip to like Washington, D.C. is not traumatic. But there were things there that no, were really difficult for, for me. Totally, totally. You know, for totally. us sensitive. 
Um, Little girlies. We need to pause really quickly. I have to go to the bathroom. Okay. Sorry, we all just paused the recording and we got more water because Julian <laughs> drank it all. And then we decided it was really uncomfortable uh, to sit here in our underwear and we each took our underwear off. I was talking about how homesick I was. I forget where we left off. And Julian, I know you were also homesick, but tell Jackie the Volvo story. Oh, God. I was at this camp. It was in Pennsylvania or something. And I think I was like just too young to go to camp. And it was a month. And I was like, <laughs> you're saying it like you're going to scare Jackie. She yeah, like, she's like, signed up, she signed up for two months away as soon as she could. Wait, how old were you? Uh, maybe nine. Okay, that's young. Yeah, definitely. Jackie's like, I know exactly which bunk you'd be in. <laughs> Watch That's me like exactly ask my what mom, I did though. in order to like <laughs> understand the percentage of the other people your age who like would have been homesick. Right. So now I'm like comparing you. Mm-hmm. Okay, continue. Yeah. Wait, how old were you when you went? No, I was older. I I don't think you were that old. I was ten when I went. Her first year, she was ten. She went yeah. for two summers. Yeah, but two I was months. already like late to the game. Not really though, because you All didn't the, go like, when you were like cool seven. girls came like two years older when they were eight, so they were already like bonded for life. Really. Yeah, yeah, like you were like late. Of, yeah, like I'm. Yeah, and, she felt yeah. late, but she I was really like so went mad that my summer. mom didn't let me go earlier just because like Allie was homesick. Oh, she I was like, you were not fair. You be ready like, for took, it. Yeah, I was like, I could have gotten my six year sweatshirt, mom, <laughs> mm-hmm. but you didn't let me go until I was ten. Like oh it, to be God. honest, I'm still really pissed off because it was a cool sweatshirt, and like you were like cool if you got a six year sweatshirt, but my ca- last year campfire, I only got a four year backpack. Oh, they give it to you based on how much money you spent at the camp. Yeah, like, it, like <laughs> if like, you got a seven-year com- blanket at your— Okay, sorry. I'm, like, talking— Continue. No, keep going. Yeah, I don't know this stuff about— like, No, wait, wait. It's just so keep funny going. for me to, like, hear it from your guys' perspective of, like, being super homesick because I was, like, pissed off that in my last summer, my, like— was so much earlier than all my best home friends and my best home friends would What do you mean so for, much like, earlier? Like, my camp, like, stopped when I was only, like, 14 and I wanted to go for so much longer or something. Oh, that's always like, so weird, though, when, when you meet someone who's, like, 18 and they're like, it's my last summer at Quinnipiac. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's weird. <laughs> it's like their college. Like they're, like, they're like, yeah, well, next year I'm going back as a uh, a CIT, a counselor, mm-hmm. counselor in training. And then I'm like, you're not training. You're just, like, smoking pot in, like, a cabin with, like, seven-year-old boys. <laughs> you're like, I'm in training. And then the next year, I'm going to come back. But when you actually want to come back as a counselor, it's always, like, they, like, have some program where they, like, bring in all these people from different countries and they're the counselors. Like, all these kids <laughs> from the UK who, like, have never been to, like, New England's woods. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they're all the counselors. But I remember, like, Jackie, remember when I made you that documentary? I, like… Oh, my gosh. I was <laughs> so traumatized by… I keep using the word traumatized, but I was like so obsessed with the idea that Jackie was going to camp because I couldn't handle it. So I was like, I was like terrified for her and I would like photograph and document everything to like make sure she was like okay and ready for this. And I would like, I was like, I have a documentary. I like would roll footage. I'd be like, Jackie, say your name and date and say where you're going. You're going to have fun, right? And she'd be like, I'm going to blah, blah, blah. Like it was really funny. You couldn't believe what she was like, embarking on. I couldn't believe you're it. leaving so- tomorrow. You're going to be gone for 28 <laughs> days. This is Survivor. We'll pick you up on July 29th at 11 a.m. Yeah. Mom said you're going to have a great time, right, Jackie? You're going to be, ha- you're going to have fun, right? And we'll miss you a lot, though. We and will. I- and say bye to Elric. Look at Elric, Jackie. Jackie, this is your dog. Elric, are you going to miss Jackie? I would like to, yeah, I would do a whole thing. And I would, uh, <laughs> I was like, I remember I was like, Jackie, like, <laughs> I was so devastated that she was gone also because she was my best friend and like Aww. my homie at home. So that when she left, I then started filming my family's <laughs> reactions. I was like, mom, like talk about how you're sad about Jackie. And I remember the video, my mom was like, well, I'm sad. Uh, I know Jackie will have a good time, but Sammy uh, is getting her tonsils surgery tomorrow. So I'm focusing <laughs> oh on that. God. And I was like, focus on Jackie. This is a documentary about Jackie, mom. I was like, so like, she's, I was like, can you? Sammy was like undergoing down? surgery the next morning. <laughs> she was like, yeah, I'm gonna focus on Sammy. I was like, you're fucking heartless. Your kid just left forever. <laughs> so yeah, focus on Sammy. Jackie's gone. Her room's cold. All right, <laughs> all right. Allie would come in to check up in my room, and she would record herself checking on. She'd go, I'm checking on your room, just like I promised you I would. Here are your dolls. Jackie, oh, there's the letters room. I would send you. <laughs> Allie would send me letters of like clippings from the headlines of People magazine of like what I'm missing in the real world. She's like, just in case you didn't know, 
Brad and Angelina are still together. <laughs> I was like, cut out a headline. Like, I'd be like, you're never going to believe this. It's like Chad Michael Murray went surfing. <laughs> I would like stiffen it, stick it in a letter. I'd like write on the envelope, news on the line. <laughs> news. And she would like share it with her cabin. She's like, um, I, I got it wrong. but we also didn't have like, like, like we're away at sea. <laughs> yeah, no, we loved it. We like would like pass around her like people magazine clipping of like, yeah. Yeah. I was so like, funny. share this. That is I was like, so share hysterical. this with your fellow campers. <laughs> if you want to all know the news, tell them what I would do with the code. With like the stickers? You did something with like stickers. No, I'd write the notes in code. Yeah, she would like write notes in code. And like when we started watching Pretty Little Liars, she would send notes being like, hey there, little Jay, heard you're having fun on the swing set, (laughs) but be careful not to jump too high. (laughs) And A. Like do that whole thing. (laughs) Like she was very entertaining to receive letters from because she wrote me every day. (laughs) (laughs) Every day. Or did you think she was like a little crazy? or like rarely a little wrote back pens. because I yeah, was she like were, busy she sometimes so- and she'd be like, I know it's okay you're not writing back. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, this sounds like really intense. Sammy wrote she, me yeah, back. She's like my long lost lover. Why at sea? <laughs> yeah, I wrote her every day because I was- pro- Every day? Because I was projecting my fear <laughs> of homelessness. So I was like, she wants Home to hear- Homesickness. <laughs> homelessness. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little high <gasps> of homesickness. And so I was like, if I were her, I'd want to hear from home every day because the worst days are the ones where you don't hear anything. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, <laughs> yeah, she's like <laughs> out water skiing. <laughs> <laughs> I would be like, mom made chicken parmesan for dinner. It was not as good as it usually is. <laughs> <laughs> no need to write back forever yeah, yours. Yeah, no Allie. need to write back. <laughs> <laughs> One time Sammy wrote me back and all that was in the envelope was a pink post-it <laughs> note that said, got your mail. <laughs> <laughs> she had like, no <laughs> Because then when Sammy came, went into camp, I had like to, to be up all night writing because I had two letters a day. <laughs> I had to send two letters at ice. I was doing one to Sammy, one to Jackie. One has to have headlines. One has to have a cartoon. Like, I couldn't handle the yeah. pressure. I was like a full publishing house. <laughs> <laughs> and like people in the bunk started liking it. I was like, I guess I could send them mail too. Like, just add them to the list. I was trying. And then the other part of that was Jackie's camp posted her photos weekly online. So we would like always go to the website and I would search frantically for photos of her. And like, you'd have to go through all like 300 uploaded every Thursday morning. This and I'd is be like, so weird. <laughs> she would print them out, cut them out, and mail them back to me. No, mom, Ali, t- mom what, did that. Why do you have oh. so much time? Like, why are you so into this? Why do because I have she so much- didn't go to camp. I because I <laughs> what could- did you do all summer? I wrote did this. letters. <laughs> she was a, she was a young pop. I did this. I watched the TV show Friends, and I wrote. to Did Jack you and hang Sammy. out with any other children? My mom and her friend. <laughs> so no, no, I didn't hang out with children. I remember the first time I started hanging out with my friend on the weekend. It was in ninth <laughs> grade, and I thought, oh, this isn't so scary after all. We could do weekends. <laughs> <laughs> We could do weekends. Weekends were never available. Now all my weekends are open. But I remember one time I went to a three night trial of a camp with Jackie. Yeah. The camp that you went to? No. No. (laughs) To be honest, like I even had a really horrible experience. So just me? (laughs) Jackie at the time. How old is Jackie at the time? How old are you? Like um, maybe like eight or not. Jackie's eight, so I'm probably eleven. And we go to this camp. We're there for two nights. Two nights. And Where was it? In upstate New York. Camp Summit. I don't even remember the name. And we're there. And obviously, I'm in, put in my age group. Jackie's put in her age group. And I'm having the that worst. Was hard. I'm having the worst time. And I'm going to... Everyone's being so nice. Everyone is like over the top nice. And I'm, I'm like shaking inside. You know that feeling? Mm-hmm. It's just the feeling you yeah, have. No, no, it's no, just no, homesickness. It's I just, just like don't. clinical homesickness. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm shaking. And I it's get, kind of like depression now that I think about it. Yeah, it's like depression. It's anxiety. like you can't shake it. You just yeah. can't shake it. Right. And I get into... Everything's infused with it. And I get into bed at night and I feel my retainer roof, like a, like a little metal thing, pop out. And the second <laughs> it pops out, I go, okay, now I can cry. And I start crying hysterically. And I'm releasing the homesick tears and they're going, what's wrong? And I'm going, it's hurting me so bad. 
And I was just saying that so that I could cry without oh. them seeing that I'm crying over missing mom. Oh. So I was like, oh, it's just hurting me really bad. I have to go to the medic. Oh. Oh. So they took me to the medic and she was, they were like, all right, well, this is like not touching you. <laughs> 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 she was like, <laughs> she was like, but we could like clip this out. I was like, all right, well. She removed your no, retainer. It was, like, it was like a built-in one and it was it was like cemented to one side. Yeah. And it was like poking at me. And I don't know what she did. She didn't do anything. She I don't, did I don't, like dental work no, on I you. Know. <laughs> she, <laughs> the oh, the she was like the lunch lady. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, she also can do like dental. Um, and I remember I was like, okay, well, can I call my mom? And they were like, no, you can't call your mom. Like, just, can you just maybe wait till, t- we have to ask. They always have to ask someone. Yeah. Because the counselors up. don't have control. They're like, yeah. we have to go ask like the associate director of communications. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. if, like sad camper six can call home. <laughs> so the woman's like, I'll go ask your mom. I'll go ask someone. We'll let you know in the morning. And then the next day, it's my last day. I see mom tomorrow. I'm waiting all day for like my phone call. And I'll never <laughs> my for- one phone call. I'll never forget <laughs> I will never forget. I passed Jackie that morning at flagpole. I oh, fin- flagpole. I finally see Jackie and I grab her by the shoulders and I go, are you okay? <laughs> and she's like, she's like, I'm sad. And I was like, I'm going to get you. <laughs> Is like, this how you remember it, Jackie? I- Keep going. I was like, don't you worry your pretty little face. I'm breaking us out of here. I'm calling mom. They're there. And I, I was putting doing such a strong face for her. I was like, I got to be so strong for her. I cared so much about being a good older sister and oh being gosh. strong for them. And I didn't want them to have any pain. And I was in so much pain. So I remember then later in the day. <laughs> <laughs> she's laughing, but it sounds like she's crying. Are you crying? I think I'm doing Laugh, Why are you crying? I don't know. It just always makes me really sad. <laughs> <laughs> you were in pain. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> now I'm crying. Oh my god. Now I'm crying. <laughs> Wait, why are you crying? I just get sad because I'm really going to help you. Oh my god. No, it's okay. <laughs> oh. Tell the joke. Tell the so, joke. So I'm dying. So I see her and then I remember later in the day I see her again. And I we just lock I just lock guys like across like the field and I'm just like, Don't worry, like, okay, her time will come and she's like, I'm good. <laughs> she goes, Allie, I'm like okay now and I'm like, You're fine. <laughs> Like, are they like, yeah, is everything cool now? Are you getting along? Like, she's like, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine until tomorrow. And I was like, <laughs> okay, well, I think I can still get us out of here. And, you know, I guess if you're less interested in that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fine. But I'll, I'll still have my call and just see what comes up and kind of circle back if, you're, if your attitude changes. But I'm happy for you. And you were like, how are you? And I was like, I'm good <laughs> I'm good and then yeah, I called mom and I was like please come get me please please I just did the usual <laughs> she said no she goes I'm not getting you I'm gonna get you tomorrow <laughs> said, please please I'll I'll do anything I, I'll never like I'll, anything you want like name it like <laughs> she was just like no just wait till tomorrow you'll get through it and I, I said I, I'll just never it, 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 you try all your things so you start with sad and then you go I'll never I'll never forgive you yeah. like I'll hate you forever if you don't do this and then <laughs> that doesn't work like you try everything yeah, yeah. Like, I'll do sad I'll do angry I'll try, I'll try sexy <laughs> don't you miss me <laughs> <laughs> anyway, nothing fucking works. Oh my god. So when I left that camp, <laughs> camp wasn't over. The period of camp in my life wasn't over. And Sarah Silverman's joke is my favorite joke, which I'm I I don't I'm gonna butcher. No, I can't. I think it's just summer camp is the second worst camp for Jews. <laughs> 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 I, I so identified with that. And then after that, mom made me go to camp. And I couldn't I didn't want to go to a sleepaway camp. <laughs> 
But all of the good ones were like sleep away. Like you don't want to go to a day camp when you're 17. So <laughs> I, mom made me go. So I found a middle ground. I found a camp called. Wait, I had some like, oh, I guess seven, 17. No, I was just no, 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 no. Yeah, no, I went to some good day camps that were just as cool. Really? Just as many issues. Yeah, you keep down yourself that. Wait, <laughs> say, it was, it say, was cool. Wait, you didn't tell the Volvo story. Oh, oh yeah. Wait, you got to do it. You got to tell it. Okay, so I was at this camp, Camp Saginaw, which was like my personal version of hell. Okay. Um. So I went at like nine. My brother had been going to camp for like years, two months, loving it. Popular, you know, friends on the girls' side, friends on the boys' side, friends with all the ages, like winning awards, like just like crushing it. He's like, I love camp. It's like the best. And I was like, all right, I guess it's my turn now. And I like went to my own camp. <laughs> I was like, I, I was in hell. And I was so homesick. I wrote like the violent letters, like threatening them. Like, you, you guys need to understand this is threatening. This. I was like, you need to take me home now. This is not right. And I would like cry on my letters, this tear circle. I was like, sometimes I would just send that. There's a name for that move. The tear circle with referenced got, earlier. The tear circle stamp. of tears. Yeah, Ali and I bonded over the tear we stamp. We did one of one of our first dates. Aww. Yeah. And you would, she said sometimes she would just send home the tears down. Yeah, just sometimes just tears. <laughs> That's it. Because I would be like silent treatment, you know? I'd be like, it's all you're getting. <laughs> I want you to know. Yeah, because we had like letter writing time where we like had yeah. to sit and like write. Oh, yeah. Some camps did that. Yeah. And so I was like, this is all I got for you today. Just a tear. Yeah. And so eventually um, I, I like worked my way up the system. <laughs> <laughs> I finally got in touch with the head lady and I had like a that real... That's so true. You have to like... You have to work. You have to like totally schmooze your way <laughs> yeah, up you to, the, to the people in control. Yeah. So I worked my way up and I finally like... Well, like the 19-year-old Europeans have to like gauge your level of homesickness before escalating your call like you're calling Chase Bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We Just someone who like you could talk to our manager. works stateside. Yeah. <laughs> so... I finally got to work with this lady, <laughs> work with her. And she's like, um, she permitted me a call or two. And like, I, she was like, okay, we can have these calls going. She put me on a call schedule. So yeah, they like started, tried to like get me whatever I wanted to keep me happy. They would like send me like junk food, like cup oh, of noodles yeah. or like pop tarts. Cause I like wasn't allowed that in my regular life. So they were like, maybe this will occupy you for a little bit. So I, like, I can speak to that too. Yeah. What? Yeah, that they definitely My parents one summer, they just I'll tell it later. Yeah, keep going. So yeah, I would have these calls, I would just cry. So then visiting day comes. <laughs> that was like my one chance to break out of here because they would be here and be able to see this hell in person. And so you decide I put on I put on a pl- full performance. <laughs> and my brother came too cuz he had he like I don't know if he was not in camp that summer or something. And he had friends that were at my camp. So he was like over hanging out with them all. <laughs> and then I was like, please, can I just switch places with him? Can he just take my place? Then we had to talk to some higher ups about that. The, oh, they uh, pursued it? They pursued it a little bit. And then they were like, no. That's uh-uh. nice of them to even pursue that. <laughs> they thought about it for a minute, but it wasn't a real consideration. Mm-hmm. I, I just like got my hopes up. But I was just crying the whole time, like having a breakdown, like <laughs> a mess. They decided to leave me. And I was like, I cannot believe How much this is longer happening. Did you I have? had two more weeks to go. <laughs> For yeah, it's two a lifetime. More. Yeah. That's a lifetime. <laughs> a lifetime. And, I, and so the point of desperation I got into was like, I would like try to like clean up my act for like an hour to just try to enjoy anything. And like, <laughs> I was so depressed. And um, I was at tennis and we were like playing tennis. And I remember so distinctly hearing a Volvo sound coming. I would have these like fantasies of like them coming. My parents drove Volvos. So I heard a Volvo. I dropped my racket and ran o- ran over to the um, side of the court. I was like, ah, they're finally coming. And it wasn't them. To break you out. Yeah, I thought like any minute they would change their minds and get in the car and come and they never came. And they, it, it was so traumatic. Why did they leave you? To the lesson? To yeah, stick. the lesson. Yeah, my mom wanted me to learn that you can't, you know, sometimes you have to stick things out. Follow I hate through that on what you've committed to. She's like said that was one of the t- toughest parenting decisions she's had to make. What do you yeah. think? Is that an important lesson as a parent to make you sit through, I don't think through so. crying at camp? I'm I picking really don't my think kid so. up. But like let them wait a few more days in I, case I, I it's think something it they can obviously depends self-soothe. on who your child is. Yeah. I think probably in both of your cases, <laughs> most extreme versions, 
probably would have been better to pick you both up. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But, you know, yeah, like I understand. <laughs> but I you was, now, we have these experiences, but were they more beneficial or harmful? I mean, I was in immense pain and I can laugh hysterically at it right. now. And I made friends at those camps. So did Only I. Only one of those camps, I'm friends with those the, those kids to this day. Stage yeah. tour. And yeah. I, one of my friends there, my best friend at that camp, Talia, we then went to NYU together and we were yeah. really close there. And she's like my friend and she lives in Los Angeles and I haven't seen her in a bit, but we talk. Totally. You know, I, I mean, do you have any friends to this day from that Volvo camp? Um, there was someone I knew going in and she was a family friend. She was just as miserable, but not to my level. She was like able to cope or something. Cope. I mean, but you want to know it's but. so interesting. I really loved camp when I went there. And I had like kind of like two girls that leaving, I thought we'd stay really close. And like, I still totally love them and have great memories of them. But I probably haven't spoken to either of them in a really long time. Yeah. Like, I I don't know, maybe for me, like, I also like do so much that and I've had a lot of like different groups that like maybe like they kind of took a back burner. But I think part of it was because I ended camp so early that like yeah, I didn't kind I of become formative with them. Like you like went and met Talia still when you were 16. Yeah. Like I stopped going to camp when I was like, I think my last summer was when I was 14. And then I did all these other really cool things. But now like <laughs> all those camp friends don't really know me. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Yeah. my that, The camp that I was successful at, meaning I lasted the whole month. Was when I start, was when I first went to stage door. Yeah, but before that, before that, I couldn't. And I don't like. I don't really love the outdoors. So every camp I went to was very outdoorsy. So in addition to sleeping away, mm. I was like, com- I was truly out of my element. I was like, I can't sleep away and go for a hike. I could maybe do one. They're too overwhelming for me. So mom made me go to this one camp because she said you have to do certain something during the summers. And I decided I would try going to a camp where you go there Monday to Friday and mom and dad can pick you up or mom and mom or dad and dad. Your parents will pick you up on the weekend, bring you home and then go back. So that's the camp I thought I could handle as a 16 year old. Or I must have been actually like 13 or 12. Mom and dad will pick me up on the weekend. So I did that. And then I was really homesick. So I begged them to not go back. (laughs) It's like commuting to work for a kid or something. (laughs) So I begged them to not make me go back the second week. And they said, you can, Ma, at this point, they're starting to understand that I'm like really fucked up. <laughs> they're like, this is, they're like, she's not like fucking around. Like she has like serious issues. <laughs> so I was like, okay. They're like, you can go back and we'll pick you up on Wednesday. So just go halfway, go two nights. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. Fine, I'll handle that. And then it's a good deal. I remember because they said they would pick me up. I was having, I started having the time of my life. Right. That, that always happens. Which is reminding that, so you can me. really of, let go. Which is reminding me of when I asked Julian's mom about Julian's camp experience. And she said that when she came home from that summer camp, they played like a montage. And Julian was like watching the video in her kitchen being like, oh, I love those people. Like uh-huh. just suddenly romanticizing the experience. She just like. Yeah. It's because it's amazing. Once your homesickness goes like, away. like, I survived that. But you click into like. Cl- like lucid, clear totally. thinking, and you're like, "Oh, that was fun! Like, I that was a great. Those were my friends there. Those were my friends. I didn't see them through the drunken haze of my emotions. Right? <laughs> you're like drunk with emotion. Right? And you're still having to do everything, so you're still having the memories. You're, you're like heaving into a you're softball. Just like, can't mitt. process them. Yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're like snotting on your t-shirt, debating whether or not you should do ropes course. <laughs> It's like really overwhelming. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not sure if you can harness me. I like miss mama. <laughs> I don't know. I miss dada. And then I would. So they did that camp. They picked me up halfway through it, which I appreciated. By that time, I appreciated that. And then the following summer or the summer before that, I think they were like, well, if you don't do sleep away, you have to do a day camp. And I was like, it's, are there any cool day camps? For me, like, I don't, I'm like, look at me. I was like an 85-year-old Jewish man. Like, I didn't want to go to day camp. I wanted to stay home and watch my shows. I was like, I want to watch Jerry Springer and then night shift, be with mom while she drinks her Baileys and pass out. 
I don't want to go to camp and like play, learn how to do archery. I'm sorry. I'm like journaling about how I think I like want to be with a woman growing up. Like I'm not, there's no need for me to like jump in an ice cold pool and take a swim test. Fuck me in the asshole one more time, won't you? These swim tests in the freezing cold lake. They, they you have swimming at like 7 a.m. in the brown pond water. And they're like, you have to jump in. You have to jump in. Really? Can I just sit this one out? I'm fucking cold. I don't want to jump oh into a lake for How do people morning. do that? How, How do people do that? <laughs> it's like doing cold plunges. It's like making little kids do like ice bath plunges in the morning. Why did you like it, Jackie? No, but like I like still have anxiety about stuff. So everything you're saying, I'm like relating to in a way of like those feelings of having fun and then also having these like horrifying emotions at the same time, but in just like such a different way because I wasn't homesick still. I was just like very like, like I wanted to like have friends and I wanted to be like camper of the week and I wanted to like oh, get God. the oh, highest level on age. my spin swim test so I could like prove my worth. <laughs> <laughs> you would get stars, right? Or something? Yeah, like I like that, like mine was way more social anxiety. Like lots wow. and lots of social anxiety. Oh God. Whoa. Which was also like super crippling. Like everything you said, like Americana, whatever. Like my issues, I was depressed as fuck at Americana, not homesick, just like crippling social anxiety. Like what kind? Jackie was like, you were homesick. I have clinical depression. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I understand yours was temporary, but I've been bogged down in mental illness for years. It has nothing to do with where I am. I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Wait, what oh, kind man. of social anxiety? Like, what's an example of something that would really um, stress you out? Not so much anymore, but just yeah, like but in the past. at the time. Like, what was like? Do we give me the specifics? Like, I was like so. I was like fighting with my best friend at the time because she kind of decided to like like the other girls in my friend group for a little, and like all of a sudden just like woke up and like acted so sick of me. Oh, that's crushing. and I was like, what I do, and like I felt like my self-worth was so tied to like that validation that I was just like so distraught and like so uncomfortable. Like also was like chubbier than all my friends. I didn't want to like share a room and change in front of them. And like, of course, that's, that's, that's so hard. I remember so badly I had to pee on the ride home and we got stuck in traffic and I was too nervous to go to the back of the bus where like all the cool boys were sitting because they would like make a comment about me peeing because they did it to like everyone who walked up and like I couldn't deal with those types of interactions. So I held my bladder in and I didn't run to mom and dad when they <laughs> they got to the thing. Did you I know. It. I tried so hard to run to the bathroom, but my bladder was so about to burst that I was actually like crawling to the bathroom <laughs> off the bus. And like, I tried so bad to pee, but like, it, it was I was holding it for so long that I couldn't like release it, and that it was like so the most sad. painful pee in my life because I didn't want like <laughs> to like say something stupid. Oh, that is so sad. That yeah. breaks my heart. But like, yeah, so similar, but different. You know, I have a memory. No, <laughs> yeah. but but it, it is similar. And it's so overwhelming. I think I had that in addition. Yeah, me too. I think I had that too. <laughs> Jackie's like, I got a bladder infection. <laughs> but I, I actually have a vivid memory. I was so protective of Jackie. Of when Jackie, it was Jackie's first day of kindergarten. (laughs) It was her first day of kindergarten. We took the bus together. (laughs) And I was in the back of the bus. And I forget if you were hysterical in the front seat of the bus (laughs) or fine. But I got off the bus. You sound like such a damaged kid. (laughs) (laughs) But I got off the bus and I gave you a thumbs up. And I remember you were like in the front seat of the bus <laughs> and you had this cute little bon- blonde hair and cute chubby cheeks and she was wearing like green shorts and a blue shirt and a little backpack Aww. and she gave me a thumbs up too and she was like love you Allie oh. I know it was and I, I was, yeah, we're fast friends if I ever saw her in the hall at school we'd like high five it was so fun seeing her in the hall at school and then we didn't have that experience again until I was a senior in high school and oh you were God. a freshman in high school. It was the best. That was Oh the, my God. I, I never and her friends that. snuck me out of like a photography class my freshman year during their free period. And I gotta come and we like drove so fast to Dunkin' Donuts. Like you go, you order and then you have to like speed back to school to make it in time. But uh-huh. walking through the halls with like 
a Duncan or something. Yeah. Status. I was like, oh my God, elite, elite. Yeah. You're Where's like, my I social just, status? Sorry, <laughs> sorry. At school, I just was getting coffee. I'm like, yeah, my yeah. senior sister totally. picked me up in her car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. We went out for a free period. Uh-huh. But the one thing I did was I always made you late your fr- in the mornings. Well, yeah, because she didn't want to go to school. So she voided it. And then I would be so late. And I like… No, I, I was just… I think I was able to go a little late because I like was a senior and I was like, yeah, I like, don't need to be care. here on time. I hit a record at my school. I won an award actually for the most latenesses. <laughs> That's not an award. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't sound it was, like… Comedic. The way Julian's flexed tonight. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> yeah. what do you mean? Like a superlative? <laughs> most late flex. person? Yeah. Um, no, that, no, no, it wasn't that. It wasn't that extreme. It was just like, they would like bet on when I would walk into a classroom. So it like became like a funny thing. Mm. They were like, yeah. Ours was called getting doked. That was our assistant principal name in charge of attendance. That Yeah, that was when he would pull you out of class and give you a, like a slip because mm-hmm. you were… Like you your class, you're late like, or if you he would come into the wa- if he would come into the class and say you're gonna get doked, yeah. Mm. Like, um, but you are always so late, so it's so funny. Wait, to what hear is that you- called? Instead of when it's called the teacher's name, it's called getting detention. Like school. yeah, but like don't tardy? you get warnings to yeah tardy? But do you get like warnings up to a um, detention? I, I think every school runs Probably their like things. programming different. Isn't it weird? They have like disciplinary systems. Yeah, and they're like not like it's not. Is that a law? Like that they're allowed to do that? <laughs> yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like, but if you like resist, if you resist <laughs> attention, then I guess you get suspended. And then what? And then you get expelled. Right. And that's the school's decision as a public school. But the public school, can they really like hold you in a room for a certain amount of period as like punishment? I guess. Because you have a handbook. Do you sign some sort of contract <laughs> at the start of the I'm school? I'm pretty sure you do have to sign the handbook. But I think it's more of like… Everyone's like, read the handbook. You're like, I'm never going to read the handbook. And they're like, (laughs) read the handbook. You're like, I read the handbook, but I didn't really read the handbook. Yeah. It's its own society. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But when I I went to stage… Well, fuck. I needed to say this. So in addition to the camp where they picked me up on the weekends, my mom needed me to be busy for one month. One month. That was all she wanted so that her and my dad could have sex again. So (laughs) she sent me to the first camp where she picked me up on the weekends. And then the second camp… I needed to find any camp and I signed up for a biking camp. <laughs> and every day they would put us in the car with our bikes and we would drive to like a biking place, bike all day long and then <laughs> go back in the van. <laughs> it sounds so fun to me. I would love to do that. Are you serious? Yeah. I love biking. <laughs> <laughs> I went on that camp with a kid. There was a kid named Chris. And years later, I'm a I'm a page at NBC. And one of my fellow pages goes up to me and goes, Hey, I went to bike camp with you. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Are you kidding me? And he said, You told everyone you were Stephen Colbert's niece. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that bike camp. And then the other week of the bike camp was an awesome adventures camp. And if there's anything I would like less, it would be an awesome adventures <laughs> camp where each day you do something that's adventurous. <laughs> because I absolutely hate adventure. <laughs> I, I hate it. I hate not feeling safe. I hate not feeling comfortable. I hate being outside. So all of these things, not now to that full degree, but I'm, mm. I'm, I like to be comfortable. Mm. So what? Nothing. Just a little concern for our vacations. Why? We've spent so much time together. This has never come up. I know, but like… I'm talking about when I was 10. I know. I'm just wondering what your um, sense of adventure is these days. Oh my God. You can't You can't do this where you get like… If I say something, you immediately let it influence your understanding now. I'm just waiting to see. I guess I'll wait and see. But have we not done… We go on hikes. Yeah. We run. We go to the beach. Right. I know I, I haven't been Julian, impacted by it. If yet. we tried to send you right now to awesome adventure camp, I'm pretty sure you would still hate <laughs> it too. Me? No, she I would love, love it. I would love awesome adventure camp. Well, let me tell you what we did. The first day, but don't think I'm like I don't want you to think I'm We'll see. Think of me we'll differently see. from telling know, you about my past. That doesn't feel fair. It's not. So, because now I, I seem well adjusted now. 
You do. I'm just like waiting to see this come out. I <laughs> feel like you've been like stuffing this down. No, and, like, it might come the, out. I don't think so. I no, think you're, this, this is just, not who you are anymore. Yeah, this was like ver- who I was when I was. When, <laughs> it was because of my anxiety. Still, <laughs> it, like all of that, those responses to like outside and all of those things are like a young person having so much anxiety and feeling they have no agency. Like I'm Mm -hmm. old enough now that I know how to, and I've done enough work on myself and how I am to understand what gives me anxiety, how I can navigate that anxiety. Exactly. Why something gives me anxiety. Like the reason I was freaking out about going tubing with like (laughs) kids on like a bus is not because I'm like afraid of tubing, but it's because (laughs) I'm like, I don't want to be in my bathing suit. What if I have to pee? I don't know who I can rely on if I'm hung. Like, it's just like a million things. So I remember one day we went tubing, hated that because I hate being in the cold water. I hate having to be in cold water. And for some reason, every fucking camp, that's a fucking requirement that you have to plunge yourself into freezing cold water. Okay, why does that have to be about camp? Is there any camp in someone's living room where you just watch movies? Because I fucking go to that camp. Does every camp have to be an outdoor camp? I'll go to a movie theater camp. I'll sit inside and watch movie theaters and go bowling and have food. (laughs) Why does every fucking camp have to be like outside getting naked and playing sports. Can I just sit at a dining room table and talk to some of my peers? I would love that camp. Indoor camp. For a lot of indoor kids out there, I'm talking to you and I know you're yes. out there. Is I everyone- think that's like nerd camp. You maybe should have gone to like a computer camp or something. I would have liked that. I don't want to go. I didn't. I wasn't ready for the outside. I could barely <laughs> handle the inside. <laughs> so, so then I remember, I'll I'm never forget for this. Outside. We went. We went rock climbing one day. And a part of the rock climbing was that you have a you have an opportunity to go caving at the Ooh. rock climbing site. <laughs> now I'm very claustrophobic. It so happens. To me. <laughs> so this is where she requests her one phone call. So <gasps> I cannot go underground in a cave with a headlight. I cannot handle that. I freak out. Mm-hmm. I'll freak out. And I, I really, really am claustrophobic at this point in time. I am not riding elevators. (laughs) (laughs) You're kidding me. Is this true? I guess. I don't really remember. If there were steps, I'll take them. I won't ride an elevator alone. Please. Of that, I remember. Yeah, I won't do that. She didn't didn't want to get stuck in an elevator alone was the key. You're turned on right now? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh my God. Okay, sorry. I'm not so wet for you, tardy McTard. So, <laughs> I was, I won the award for being late every day and you ran and cried at the sound of the Volvo screeching. Are you kidding me? How dare you look down on me? <laughs> Trading your spot with Benjamin for a, a camp. So, I, where they're like, you don't have to go caving though. You don't have to. That's not mandatory. And I was like, thank fucking God. My friend goes caving. She gets stuck. <laughs> and they have to like try and pull her out. And I was like terrified. I was freaking out. I was like, oh my God, if she's, is she ever going to come out? Like I was horrified that she got stuck. And I remember when we were rock climbing, I had to pee outside. And every time I peed outside up <laughs> until that point, I peed on myself because of the way any woman knows how if you pee and you're a woman, you have to sit back far, far, farther than you think or you pee on yourself. <laughs> so what happens at this point in time is we're rock climbing and I say, I have to pee. And the counselor goes, okay, go find a spot. And I (laughs) will never forget. Everyone's hanging out on the side of a mountain. (laughs) Everyone's hanging out on the side of the rock climbing wall. And I walk a little (laughs) to the left of them. And down to on the side of another kind of rock climbing area. And I can see them. But for some reason, I think they can't see me. (laughs) And I pull my jeans down and... Pee all over my jeans. (laughs) And I'm essentially locking eyes with everyone as I do. (laughs) And then I walked back and my jeans were covered in urine. No. And all the guys were is terrible. And all the guys were eyeing my pee stain. (laughs) And I was and they were pretending they didn't see, and I was pretending they didn't they didn't say anything. (laughs) How that's I can't believe they would be so kind. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but imagine like <laughs> maybe them looking you straight in the eye. While you do there's it. a part of me that still hopes they didn't see, but one there's person a part of me. 
one a part of me still thinks that maybe they didn't see, but this one girl did lock eyes with me. And I know she saw saw, but then she quickly turned away out of respect. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that so that was that was awesome adventures and that was horrible. Wow. You're lucky you didn't catch a bully with that. Catch a bully? Yeah, catch a bully. Like I I can't yeah, imagine course. they wouldn't leech onto that. I know. No one was really the weird part about all of this was in addition to being so neur- neurotic and anxious and stuff, I was always like making jokes like and, t- and felt people thought I was like in control. So when I would like go off and like shrivel up, yeah, that was that was the like what was really going on. But I was always funny and seemed confident and oh, secure. Okay. Yeah. Like I was t- t- telling people I was Stephen Colbert's daughter and then I was like peeing on myself. <laughs> <laughs> like I wasn't good. Right, right. No, it was such a fun talk about camp. And so everything. funny. It's funny, everyone's experiences around stuff like that. I think uh, we're going to go to sleep, but we will... uh, I'm going to go cry. (laughs) We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for joining us. This is The Ali Colbert Show. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.